Greetings in the name of Jesus to you who are part of one of several congregations of our Pacifica Synod joining together on this journey of Lent. Lent means spring and spring is a time of growth. And this year we grow into a deeper sense of community with one another for we are created for communion with God to love one another and to live in harmony with all of creation. And therefore our theme for this Lenten journey is created for community. Even though a pandemic has separated us physically from one another, we are still bound together in one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. I'm Tim Edmondson, pastor developer of Hope Palm Springs, and I, along with other pastors and worship leaders from across our synod, invite you to join us weekly as together we walk the pathway of Lent, a, a path that leads eventually to the empty tomb of Christ. May we arrive at that empty tomb together, the people of God, the body of Christ created for community. Hello, my name is Pastor Kate Lear. And I'm Vicar Matt Polsdoffer. And together we both serve at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in La Habra. We'll start off the series and we're kicking off with In Community with Creation. Hi, I'm Pastor Maggie Goodwin. I am pastor of Salem Lutheran in partnership with Whittier Presbyterian Church. And I'm actually a Presbyterian pastor. And we will be doing the week two in community with the saints. Hello, everyone. I'm Nate Allen. I'm pastor at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Fullerton, California. And we will be going for week three with in community with our neighbors. And it's an honor to be here with my colleagues. Hi, my name is Jasmine Waring. I'm the intern pastor at First Lutheran Church Fullerton and at the table. On March 17th, our theme will be in community with those on the margins. Hi, I'm Greg Ronnie, and I'm the pastor at First Lutheran Church and the Table, and we hope you'll join us as we follow Jesus across the sea, beyond borders, and deep into the margins, bringing life and creating community. Hi, I'm Pastor Jennifer Schultz, and I serve at Bethlehem Lutheran in Los Alamitos, and I'll be wrapping the series up on March 24th with the theme, Community in Christ. We are so excited to be able to working together collectively in a community for these Lenten worship services and are happy that you are going to participate with us. We look forward to worshiping with you during these Lenten services. finds you well, whatever time it is that you see it. 
Um, that was one of our soloists, Jillian, who um, we have three you'll hear from, Jillian, Ellie, and Jake. Our uh, accompanist, Daniel, has been hard at work this past year um, putting together a piano recording and then taking a recording from our soloists around the country. Um, we are looking for someone more local if your congregation has somebody interested in singing for us. Um, but we have, and so Jillian is from Louisville, Kentucky, and Ellie and Jake, I believe, are from the Portland area. So um, they are amazing, beautiful, beautiful singers. Jillian um, sings opera, as you may have noticed. So we have had a great time uh, with our accompanist. We'll record a track, and then he'll send it to them, and they will sing over it, and then send it back. And he puts it all together and then puts the hymnal um, on top of that um, and, and does a lot more work than one would expect for the job title of accompanist. So I want to give him the credit for that. And now I welcome you to this Lenten reflection on behalf of Salem Lutheran and Whittier Presbyterian churches. As I welcome folks on Sunday morning, we are two congregations coming together to meet you wherever you are on your journey. Our theme today is in community with the saints, which has a special meaning to our congregation, as we mean not just those who have come before us, but also those across denominational lines, acknowledging one spirit, one Lord, and one baptism. We are very excited to gather virtually with other congregations of the Rejoice Conference. Now please join the saints of our two congregations in the opening litany. And you may notice we did this over Zoom. It might be a bit rough, but sometimes life with the saints can be a bit rough. Loving God, you made us in your image and called us to be stewards of all you have made. We are your creation. Hear us, O God. God. Spirit of gentleness, we live in communion with the saints who have gone before us and the saints who live among us. We are your creation. Your creation. Yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, oh God. God. Triune God, three in one, you exist in relationship. Guide us to be in relationship and in community with our neighbors. We are your creation. Lord, beyond all boundaries, you have called us to be in community with those that the world deems out of bounds and outside of love. We are your creation. Hear us, O oh God. God. Jesus, Christ, Jesus the Christ, in yes. you we are redeemed, in you we are found, in you we are created for community. We are your creation. Hear us, O oh God. In the season of Lent, when we are separated from one another, remind us that we are created for community. Amen. 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 Timeless one, let us pray. Timeless one, you renew your promises in every generation. Deepen our awareness of the communion of saints who have gone before us and the saints in our own time and the saints who will carry on your message of grace after us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our next song this morning is uh, Lamb of God, and this is Jake. Guilty sword 
and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love we crucified, we laughed and scorned Him as He died. The humble King we named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb has heard this passage a couple times already in the last few weeks. This was the lectionary reading for Transfiguration Sunday. And then as this passage is what follows from Sunday from this past Sunday's gospel reading, I tacked it on um, to the end of this past Sunday's uh, reading as well. However, it's always good to hear a message in varying ways. And so the gospel reading for this morning comes from Mark chapter 9. Let me get this queued up so you can see it. It's from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 8. Make sure I'm standing where you can see me. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. Well, I preached on this passage a few weeks ago and just this past Sunday. It is quite fun to look at it from different angles. With our theme being in community with the saints, I couldn't help but think back to my ordination last year because the robe my parents ordered for me didn't arrive in time. 
I wore the cassock I stashed in my suitcase just in case. That cassock was one I found in the closet in my office here at Salem Lutheran, left by a previous pastor. The stole I wore was one given to me by a Presbyterian pastor who mentored me through the early stages of the ordination process. So one piece Lutheran and one piece Presbyterian. But that day was also March 15th, 2020. It was the first Sunday we had to call off in-person worship here in Whittier. We'd already planned to live stream my ordination service from Seattle, and so it was decided that would be the worship service for the congregation that Sunday. Leading up to that day, I had to transition from inviting people to attend into begging them to stay home. A member of my ordination commission was immunocompromised and unable to participate. With my ordination commission and a small handful of those who felt safe enough to attend, I was still ordained. The service was kept brief, and though I was, I, uh, I was told the reception after was canceled, a few from the congregation did offer cookies as a brief stand-up reception before we all parted ways. Yet, on that day, many saints gathered online to worship with us in that moment. And I say that when specifically thinking of being in community with the saints on that day, I cannot help but think of my grandparents watching over that day from above. And as a woman being ordained, I think particularly of my grandmothers being watched over by my Lutheran grandmother and my Presbyterian grandmother poking and shoving one another, saying, that's my granddaughter, she's a Presbyterian pastor. And the other saying, that's my granddaughter, she's a Lutheran pastor. Can you imagine that excitement or encouragement in that great cloud of witnesses cheering you on? The generations that came before us who see us struggle, who see us longing to be in the physical presence of all the saints here on earth. Can you imagine how proud they must be that we are still soldiering on together in this virtual space? We must not get distracted like Peter and seek to build houses or shrines, but to remember who we are and whose we are. Just prior to being brought up to the mountain in the story in which Jesus is the story in which Jesus has to rebuke Peter by saying, get behind me, Satan because he doesn't want to hear what Jesus has to say about suffering and dying. Then on the mountain, he struggles to be in the moment, witnessing this extraordinary event. And ultimately God has to directly say, this is my son, listen to him. Can you imagine what Jesus and Moses and Elijah are thinking, watching Peter sputter and stumble? perhaps not too different from what Jesus and all the other saints are thinking watching us sputter and stumble. I imagine the basic message is still the same. Jesus is the son of God, listen to him. But remember, we are not alone. We are in a great and vast community that has existed long before us and will exist long after us. Maybe they're up there watching us clinging on to old things saying, this is the way we've always done it. We're saying, Saint so-and-so built this pulpit. Even if it is falling apart, we can't get rid of it. All the while that saint is wondering where our focus went. Pleading with us, Jesus is the son of God. Listen to him. That pulpit example may or may not be a real example from a congregation in my past that I won't name. I see great beauty and hope for the future of our community of saints in the brave and bold actions of the people at Salem Lutheran and Whittier Presbyterian churches that led me to accept this unique call. Whittier Presbyterian decided they could no longer afford their building 
and investigated the possibility of closing altogether. But the congregation believes strongly that they are called to continued ministry. So they didn't close, but they did put their building up for sale. Then Salem Lutheran, in a somewhat similar position, noticing that Whittier Presbyterian was selling their building, wrote a letter. That letter invited the congregation of Whittier Presbyterian to come and worship together, which also required much willingness to change on their part. Our services do tend to lean Presbyterian because that is my training. But we blend where we can, and when I need a Sunday off, I have done my best to use pre-recorded services from the Synod to balance us out. This past Sunday, we welcomed a new member to Salem Lutheran, and I noticed the, liturgy, the Lutheran liturgy for welcoming a new member was very similar to the Presbyterian liturgy for commissioning and installing officers of the congregation who will serve on the council, which Presbyterians call a session, or in pastoral care ministries. So I jumbled the two liturgies together and we welcomed a new member while simultaneously calling members to service in the congregation. I believe the saints who have gone before us in both congregations cheer us on in our funny partnership and with every decision that moves away from the way it has always been and closer to listening to Jesus Christ. And because these are just beautiful, I have to show you. You may have noticed in the litany before, but you will notice in the um, benediction, the prayer shawls that a few of our folks are wearing. And that's because when we call people to those positions of service, usually there's a laying on of hands. And one of our folks, Donna Hansen, sewed these, these shawls or capes um, red for, for the Holy Spirit, and then the hands are in each of the liturgical colors, and each, each person in the congregation um, sent their handprint to Donna, and then we surprised everyone with those on Sunday um, as a way to still do the laying on of hands as the community of saints, even from a distance. As we move to a time of prayer, I want to begin with a moment of uh, silence to meditate and to think of those that we have lost this year. We counted 400,000 deaths from COVID-19 in January. And just um, last week, we hit 500,000. It took us only three months to get to the first 100,000, but it's taken us only one month to get from four to five. So let's take a moment to consider those losses. And as our prayers um, for today, I want to offer um, this video from theworkofthepeople.com. It is called Praise Song for a Pandemic. And it offers prayers of praise and blessing for those who have gotten us through this time, those saints um, who, who are here on earth and those saints who have gone before, those saints that we have lost in this past year. Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care, for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. 
Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us to find an antidote, and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers, finding new ways to educate children from afar, and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health, praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless, and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance and slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. Amen. Now, for the benediction, this is Ursula Bell, who will give our blessing, is one from our congregation who feels a tie to both our Presbyterian side and our Lutheran side. She was also one commissioned to serve the congregation in pastoral care this past Sunday. So you will notice that she will be wearing that shawl with the laying on of hands. The creator who fashions us together with all things. The Christ who leads us into a new beloved community. The spirit who holds us in the communion of saints. One God. Bless you now and always. Amen. And now go in peace, join together in Christ. And as our congregation closes our services, go in peace to seek God's way. Thanks be to God. And as we depart, uh, I want to play a song from today. This is Ellie singing, Jesus, Remember Me. And today songs are very repetitive and they are meant to be something that you repeat to get into a meditative space. And so, 
as we leave this time, um, let us hear Jesus remember me. Thanks be to God.